my story today is about this book I have right here. It's called Big Bosses. It came out actually a few years ago, and the story of how we got uh, to this book is very interesting. Um, we were contacted by a couple of guys that found in a filing box that had been coming down and down and down from family member to family member. While one of them was moving out, they found the box again, they opened it, and inside the box they found a manuscript that was written by their grandmother. Her name, as you can see on the cover of the book, was Altia McDowell Althemus. And it happens to be that she worked for Mr. James Deering for a couple of years in her life. And uh, later on, she decided to write her memoirs, her stories, right, about her life. Althea moved to Miami in 1916 or 17, I believe, and she uh, came to the city by herself with her son, Robert. She was actually divorced, which at the time was not very common. Um, also, it wasn't regular to find a working single mother. Typically, working women back then were um, single, they didn't have children, and life was a little bit different. Uh, the first chapter of this book focuses on James Deering, who she calls Bo um, as a word of endearment. And I wanted to call your attention to a couple of things about this book. The first one is that even if Althea is not a widely recognized writer, and this might be her only book ever, she does have some drawings inside the book by a very famous person, called Phineas Pace, who is actually responsible for the beautiful looks of our um, Coral Gables neighborhood and the Spanish style that is all around the area. So while she was here, she met Paste. They became apparently good friends and when she was writing her memoirs later on, she asked him if he would be willing to do some illustrations for her book and he agreed. Today, I really wanna read to you one little section of the book that brings up another really cool story and gives me the cue to show you a really, really interesting portion of the dining room that a lot of people don't get to see when they visit because we have the barriers. So it's on page 20, which is the chapter where she talks about James Deering. She's discussing how he had very famous uh, friends and acquaintances visit, visiting Vizcaya while she was here. And this section starts like this. Our next distinguished luncheon guest was another great actress. This breakfast room was a small cozy place with a lovely marble, nude lady fountain in the corner. You see, Bo had a sense of humor, and when entertaining the ladies, he would have the fountain turned on so that the constant dripping of water would remind his guests of other things. This section of the book also calls our attention to sketch number five made by Paste, which is in the next page, and we see who would be Mr. Deering, the actress, the trova, according to the book, and a beautiful fountain. These two paragraphs bring a lot of topics to discuss. The first topic is that Althea, at the beginning of her book, mentions how he cha she changed some names, locations, and years or dates to conceal the um, real identity uh, identity of some of the people she talks about. We believe that this actress she was talking about was originally Olga Petrova, who was a British uh, screenwriter, producer, and actress, very famous in the Gilded Age, and she actually appears in a movie that was filmed at Vizcaya called The Life Mask in 1918. So she was a guest of Mr. Deering for a lunch, and it also uh, lets us talk about his sense of humor, which we uh, don't know much about him and his personality. But now with the book, we've learned a lot of things about how funny and uh, particular he was. And finally, it gives us a great excuse to talk about this fountain right here. Normally when people visit Vizcaya and they come to the dining room, they get to see the furniture that is very imposing, but it's very difficult to see that there's a beautiful marble fountain hidden kind of behind a wooden console. The book and um, Althea made sure to note that this was a cozy little breakfast corner. We cannot be 100% sure that this was the fountain that was depicted by Paste, but in looking at it and reading her description, we do believe that this could be the same location where they were having uh, 
a luncheon together. The fountain is not working right now, but during the during time was definitely working and running. And as you can tell by Althea's story, he liked to have the water dripping all the time to keep his guests uh, distracted throughout the meal. 